Thank you all viewers and subscribers for tune into our channel. In previous part of this project, we have seen software configurations of the project, IoT-based smart door lock. In this part, we will see about hardware setup and interfacings. In this session we will see particle photon to next-gen display interfacing. First we will see its schematics, then how to add next-gen library in VS Code Editor. And then we will see one example from library with next-gen interface. After that we will learn how particle photon and RFID reader is interfaced, its schematics, then we will see how to add RFID library in VS Code Editor. We will then see one example from library in which we will read some RFID cards or tags. So, let's get started. Here is the schematic of interfacing of particle photon P0 and 3.5 inch next-gen touchscreen display. You can see here, Next-gen display is powered with 5V taken from this MB102 breadboard power converter module. This module converts 9V battery, or USB power supply to, 2 power rails, 5V, and 3.3V. When the photon is powered via the USB port, V and pin, will output a voltage of approximately 4.8V DC. Due to a reverse polarity protection series Schottky diode between, V plus of USB and V and pin. Though, when V and pin, used as an output, the max load on V and pin, is 1 ampere, but, next-gen display requires 5 volt 500 milliamperes DC recommended power supply. So it is advisable that, we should power next-gen display using external power source, rather than via photon. Then next, TX pin of next-gen display is connected RX pin of photon, and, RX pin of next-gen display is connected to TX pin of photon. You will get this circuit diagram on our GitHub account. Now let's see how to program this circuitry, how to create project, and how to add next-gen library. Open VS Code Editor. Go to Particle Workbench. Create new project. Select folder, or, create new folder. Enter project's name. Enter and click OK. Now this will take some time. After successful initialization, project will get open. Authorize any folder permission warnings pop up. Go to project here. In src folder you will find main code file with .ino extension. If you are using particle workbench first time, then you need to log into your particle account first. From here, then you need to select the device type and device OS. Also, you have to enter name of your device, which you have given when you claimed and registered your device to Particle Cloud Console. To add library, you need to go Particle Workbench. Here, you will find option to install library. When you click here, this pop-up will ask you to enter name of the library. Please note that you should enter the name of library correctly, otherwise you may face library not found error. Now, let's see example of next-gen library. First, we will search this query next-gen display library for particle photon on Google. Go to this first result. This is particle documentation for next-gen library. Here you can see all examples like comp button, gauge, slider, etc. All working with this library. You will find all the information about this library here. You can also clone it via Git. Here is the link. It is recommended to go for stable release rather than latest unstable release to avoid any incompatibility. So, here you can see. This library is supported mainboards like Core, Photon, Electron, and others. Also, check out the configuration they have given for serial debug. Here, you can find name of library as Etidlib Nextgen. Let's enter this library name to that pop-up. Press Enter. Your library will get installed, and you can verify it by going into lib folder. Now, let's load one example from library. Comp button. 
Copy this code to our recently created project source file. Let's check out the code in brief. Here in comment they have given, this example shows that, when the button component on the nextgen screen is released, the text of this button will plus one, every time. So, we have to create nextgen display GUI for this with one button. Let's do it. Open nextgen editor IDE. This is nextgen editor IDE. Let's create new project. Go to file, click on new. Give a name to file, add extension.hmi. And then click on save. Then model selection window will get open. Here, select type of your display. Then click on display option. Select display direction. Then click OK. You can also change your display type by going to this device ID option. So this is the main interface of this nextgen editor. Here is the toolbox where you will find different GUI tools like text, button, slider, number, etc. This is pictures toolbar where you can import pictures for backgrounds and pages. Here is your main canvas or display where you can drag and drop these components on it. Here is page toolbar where you can add multiple pages to your display. Here down, there is attribute window where you can modify properties of your GUI components. Here is the output window where output messages about compilation will be shown, like errors, warnings, etc. And here is the event window where designer can add his own code. Beside pictures to bar, you will find fonts generator. You need to generate required fonts for display from here. On upper side, you will find compile, debug, and upload buttons. So, let's create one button for our tutorial. Go to toolbox, you can click on button tool, button B0 will get added to display, like this. You can resize the button size. Now let's edit attributes of this button. So, when you select page here, attributes section will show attributes of page, like its ID, type, background color, etc. And when you select button here on canvas, attributes section will show properties of button B0. So, here in text field, new text is written, but it is not showing on button. Why? Because this font 0 is not yet added by us and neither generated by us so far. So, let's first generate the font. Go to Tools and select Font Generator. It will get open a new window, like this. Now select Height, Type, and then give name to the font. After that, click here to generate the font. Now again, you have to give name and click on Save your font will get generated like this. Click OK here. Then it will ask you that, whether you want to add that font to project or not, click Yes here. And, close the font generator. Here, you can see, our font got listed in fonts window. Now, as soon as you click on button B0, you will get new text will get displayed on button. But, we want that button to be blank. So, Go to the attributes of button and remove new text, like this. Please note two important attribute properties here, the ID and the object name. Like for button, ID is 1 and object name is B0. These two properties we are going to enter in our code. Now, let's go to our code. Here you can see button has page ID is equals to 0. Component ID is 1. And component name is B0. So, here in callback function of button B0 we have incremented number by 1. And then set the text value of button component. So, this example will show, when the button component on the nextgen screen is released, the text of this button will plus 1 every time. But, how can you know that button is pressed? or released. 
For that we have to set event property. Let me show you. Go to NextGenEditor IDE again. Let's first debug the project, go to upper toolbar. Here is the button for debug. Click that. You can see an output window code got compiled first, then debug started. This is debug window. What we are seeing here is called simulator. You can also connect NextGen display via serial adapter module and set this option. User MCU input for actual real-time hardware debugging. But we will go with simulator for time being. There are a lot of operations here, you can check them out later. Like operations, instructions input, and waveform generator etc. So, here on canvas, when you click on button, it get activates. But we are not sending any values or codes to MCU. Simulator returns nothing. Okay, now close the debugger. Click on button again. Go to events, here first click on button, because we are going to add event to button component. Then here in events window, there are two different events for button. 1. Touch press event, and 2. Touch release event. There is option saying, send component ID. Check that item, to enable it. We will enable it for, touch release event. Now save the project. And, again go to debugger. Here now when you click on button. You can see simulator returns ASCII values of button activation. So, in this way MCU will get know about button is pressed. Ok, now, let's compile this nextgen project. Click on compile button. Here, in output window you can see, project compiled successfully with zero errors and zero warnings. Let's see binary file, and where it got created. To see binary file or program file of nextgen display, you need to go to file, and, click on, open build folder. Build folder will get open. Here you will find that, tft file. This is the file which you have to flash into display. For that you will need SD card. Or you can also use TTL serial module. But we recommend SD card method. For flashing the TFT file into the nextgen display, we need these components. Micro SD card, 1 GB will be sufficient. SD card reader. 5 volts 500 milliamperes power supply, you can use your cell phone charger with same rating. And, USB to 2 pin connector, which usually comes with nextgen display. This is rear side of nextgen display, here you can see there is slot, to insert the micro SD card. Let's see its demo in next slide. First, you need to format SD card, to erase anything on it. Please note that, flashing can be done successfully only if, there is only TFT file on SD card. There must be no other types of files on the card. So, after doing formatting of SD card, send, or, copy the project's TFT file to SD card. Then, remove the power supply from nextgen display, if, connected already, then, insert SD card into that slot. There is latch locking like mechanism, you need to just press the card into the slot slowly, it will get latched inside. Make sure you have inserted proper side. After that you can connect power supply. As soon as you connect power to nextgen display, flashing process will get start, you can see its status and log on display itself. Here, in this process, TFT file on SD card will get transferred to Escore prom of nextgen display. If flashing process completes successfully, display will show its status. Then you should remove the power first, and then, remove SD card. Please do not forget to remove the SD card, because, if you placed it, as it is, then, whenever next time you connect power supply to the display, flashing process will get starred again and again. So, in this way, you can program and flash the nextgen display with your graphical user interface. Now, let's go to our code again. Here in Visual Studio Code Editor, we will see how to compile and flash this code to Particle Photon P0. On top right corner of IDE, 
there are buttons to compile, flash, and open CLI. You can also go to command palette and use these commands to compile and flash the code on cloud. Let's click on cloud compile. Now project is compiling for Photon with OS version 2.1.0. You can see the process status here. This process will take some time to compile. Because code is compiling on particle cloud, hence you will require internet connectivity for this. You can give command particle colon install local compiler if you want to do this locally. But we will prefer cloud method. If program gets compiled successfully, we will get photon firmware binary file here in Explorer, like this. Before flashing this project to particle photon, you should first select device, here, you have to give name of your device which you have given in particle cloud console. Then, to flash this code, launch the command palette and click on particle cloud flash. You can flash this locally in DFU mode, but you should have the toolchain installed. Here the device is flashing from cloud. You can see an insight window here, the photon is being flashed. Now let's see the demo by using NextGen Display Touch Screen. Is it working? Yes, it is. Text value of button is changing as we press the button on screen. Finally, we have completed Particle Photon to NextGen Display Interfacing Tutorial. Let's move forward and see Next Interfacing, RC522 RFID Reader, and Particle Photon Interfacing. We have schematic as shown here. We powered RFID module using Photon's 3.3 volt pin. RFID reader requires current up to 13 to 26 milliamperes, and particle datasheet says. When used as an output, the max load on 3v3 pin is 100 milliamperes. Hence, we can use it to power RFID module. All connections in circuit diagram are given in color coding, therefore, it's easy to connect. Let's create new project for RFID in VS Code Editor. Go to Particle Workbench and create it, as we explained earlier. So here is the project and the source code file. Now, let's install library for RFID Reader. Again, go to Particle Workbench and click on Install Library. Enter the name of library. There are many libraries available for this module, but we have used this MFRC522, search this word and pop up. Library will get automatically installed and added in your project. You can check that out in Explorer, here. Go to Folder, Lib. Here is the MFRC522 library. Let's check out the given examples. Go to Dump Info and copy the code. Paste that code into our project source code file. Into the .ino file. Save the file. In code, here is the pin configuration, make sure that you have connected as given here. This code will dump all the info related to the RFID card, which you place on the reader. Now, compile and flash the code into Photon, as we have done earlier. Let's see the output or demo. The demonstration of this tutorial shows that as soon as we place the RFID card on the reader, reader will starts reading the coded information into the RFID card and Photon will simultaneously print that information to the serial terminal. With the help of this program, we can read the RFID codes of the cards or tags, which we are going to set as authorized in our main project. And we can assign them to particular users. All right, this was all about hardware interfacings in the project, IoT-based smart door lock. In next video we will see about webhook integrations and how to use them to generate OTP. Stay tuned.